So welcome back. And today we get to talk about a smaller plant family that uh, you may see some of the members out there, out and about. Uh, and uh, the image that you see here is uh, from Carolina Island because there will be uh, some endemic uh, plants from this family group in Carolina Island, as well as the rest of the Channel Islands. And so when we look at this uh, family tree or the phylogeny tree, uh, for the plants that are going to be related. Uh, so we can see that all of these families have a common ancestor that evolved uh, many, many million years ago. And as uh, they became more modern, then they diversified into the different plant family groups that we'll see. Uh, and so we have uh, our family group, which is going to be the Scrofulariaceae, or what is known as the Figworth family that we'll get to talk about in more detail. And uh, here is a, the typical flower or a typical flower that is not gonna be too different than many of the other things that we've seen. There's no real big specialization. There's nothing that makes it very, very unique uh, plant, flower. Uh, and so, just by flower alone, uh, it's going to be a little bit difficult to identify the members. But since the flower family is small, uh, it will be just a good idea for you to know the genera. And then you can trace those back to the family and that can help you a lot more. And so we have the Figworth family. Uh, but when, before we get to that map, we can see that one of the common relatives uh, or common ancestor or a plant uh, in the family of Plantaginaceae, uh, the plantain is gonna be the closest related family member. Uh, and that's uh, in the past, uh, all of these members or all of these plants were together in the scruff. Uh, with a new genetic treatment, the Plantaginaceae became its own family. And so what was before a very large family got divided and now the Scrofulariaceae is just gonna have some very small, or it's gonna be a very smaller, uh, much, much smaller family with just a few genera here and there. Uh, so we have the Figworth family that is divided in a lot of parts of the world. And once again, California makes a, for an area for many of the members to also be here. So we have native members out in our Chaparral area and or our coastal sage scrub area. So it's gonna be a die cut, uh, 65 genera. We're just gonna look at the more common ones uh, that you're gonna see in the garden because many of them are used for ornamental purposes. And then uh, we may see a few more unusual ones and about 1700 species. This is a small family. And so here is uh, Scrofularia villosa. Uh, that's gonna be kind of our type uh, specimen here so that we can look at some of the characteristics that are gonna be part of this, uh, members of this family. So we see a cluster of flowers on so inflorescence and villosa means with lots and lots of fine hair. And you can see uh, with the description, the flower clusters or the stems are gonna be covered with hairs. And we see a tiny flower here. Many members of this family are gonna be known as bee plants because I guess the flower somehow remembers, uh, resembles a tiny bee. Uh, so there's this, the side view of the flower and here's uh, the front view of the flower. Uh, so it's not gonna be very showy. Most often it's gonna kind of blend in with the rest of the vegetation and you might need to find the plant in order for you to now trace uh, your eyes to the top and then see the flowers. And uh, when we look at the flowers, uh, again, we're gonna have something, a uh, few things that are going to be common and uh, we're gonna have one stigma that will lead to an ovary. And then we're gonna have the fruit that is gonna be dry, not really edible. And then it's gonna have a persistent style uh, that's gonna remain even after the fruit has dried out. So those are a few things. Otherwise, the family is just gonna be, the members are gonna be out there. So one of the more common one for ornamental purposes is gonna be the butterfly bush, the genus Budlia. 
Uh, so here showing you some of the flower clusters and the flowers themselves. The flowers are gonna be very small because they're gonna be pollinated by butterfly and most of the reproductive components are gonna be hidden below the petals. And so you might need a magnifying glass to be able to see those. Uh, but it is a very common plant. It does have very nice fragrance. And there's gonna be several uh, colors as well as a few species that you might encounter. The WDI is gonna be the main one, uh, but as you start looking in certain nurseries, you might find a few of the other species that are gonna be out there, including the pinks and the whites. Or here is the weeping, uh, weeping uh, butterfly bush. Uh, this one has been growing at the Fullerton uh, I've read them for quite a while. And uh, when it's in flower, it's gonna be completely covered with uh, all these magenta colored blossoms. And every time that it's in flower, everybody wants to get one of those plants because it is a, quite a show to see them in full flower. Or the whorehound uh, butterfly bush, uh, only because the leaves are gonna be hairy and small and in the shape of the more common plant named whorehound that has been used for medicine. Uh, here showing you the flowers uh, or a different species that you might get in some of the internet nurseries uh, that I've grown here before. Uh, or uh, Badlea indica, which is often used for bonsai. This is a little bit more unusual. Uh, if you can find it, you should get it because it is very nice to grow. Uh, the leaves are going to have the shape or the appearance of an oak, and that's why it's often used as a bonsai to mimic a large oak. Uh, so from that butterfly bush, then we can look into some of the annuals that are used uh, in Southern California as a cool season annual plant. Uh, they can either, either be grown from seed or from cuttings, or uh, you can purchase them from the store. Uh, so diaseca uh, or aloncia, which has uh, its origin in South America, that it is becoming a lot more popular. Uh, this one is the apricot color one, uh, but not really as popular as the previous one. Uh, so this might merit a lot more attention. And here's uh, a red color one uh, that I, you may see here and there. Uh, so if you've never grown them, you might wanna give them a try for something different or something unusual. And uh, from Australia, we get a very popular plant known as emu bush, uh, the genus Eremophila. And uh, just emu because that is the large walking bird in Australia. Uh, so it is a very popular plant in Southern California that is used for the gardens. And here you can see it being used in the parkway and as a parkway plant where it's completely covered with those uh, fuchsia color flowers. And uh, the bottom right kind of shows you the flower when it has been uh, cut open. So as you can see the petals and the stamens and then that ovary with the, that will later become the fruit. Uh, so in Australia, this uh, shrubs or these flowers are pollinated by birds. And so they follow the bird pollination syndrome of having tubular flowers. For us, they do get visited by hummingbirds, which is gonna be our native uh, bird pollinator here in Southern California. Uh, so here is a different species, uh, Mophila glabra. Uh, and uh, here's another one that I happen to get from the Fullerton Arboretum, which is going very happily there. And there's gonna be a lot more, a lot, there has been a, larger amount of Australian nurseries or uh, nurseries that specialize in growing Australian plants. And so several new hybrids and selections of Eremophilas as well as other plants from South Australia have uh, come, have been introduced and they are now available for you to grow if you want something different. And here you can see the remnants of the stigma as mentioned before. Uh, that is still attached to the ovary. Uh, and here's a uh, uh, Aromophila, uh, the pink one. Uh, and uh, there's a different view of uh, the one that I've grown before. 
Uh, and some of them that the flowers will become bigger, not to be confused with uh, members of uh, the jacaranda or bignonia family, the trumpet vine family, because they may have some resemblance, but at the end, they are very different plant groups. And there's uh, the close up of uh, these flowers and uh, the fruit with that remnants of the style still attached to it. Uh, and then we have uh, river star, uh, Gonfostigma, Gonfostigma virgata. Uh, we've grown it here in Long Beach for many years and uh, I still don't see it as often in the garden, perhaps because in South Africa or Africa where it's native to, it's associated with water and associated with rivers. And now that we are in a drought in a drought and or in a water conservation mode, then something like that might not be as seen as favorable. And so it does make a very nice plant here with a, a nice water feature. And uh, when it's in flower, it will have some very nice uh, blossoms, as you can see here. And it's also going to be for good for Australian, uh, good for butterflies. Uh, and then from Texas or Central United States, we have the Texas Ranger uh, here showing you the flowers uh, for that plant. Uh, this is more trumpet like. They may resemble snapdragons because uh, the snapdragons that are in the Plantagenesia or this closest relative, uh, they have some similarities because of the ancestry. Uh, so here's uh, the Texas Ranger because it is native to Texas and central United States, and it's going to be a very popular plant for desert areas or for areas where there's a lot of heat and a little bit of water. This plant will do very, very well, and it gets covered with flowers. Uh, also from Australia, we used to grow a lot of myoporum, and this is uh, the tree myoporum that unfortunately it has become much more difficult to grow due to the introduction of a thrips. A thrips is a pest uh, from Australia that was brought over or was introduced and it has devastated uh, the different myoporum trees that we have out there. So now myoporum trees are very unusual to see. So here's one that although still alive, it is suffering uh, and some die back. Uh, it is the number of insects that continuously feed on the plant that it overwhelms it and eventually it'll die. Uh, so here's uh, the drawing of the flower and uh, there's the flower or the picture of the flower. And uh, we do have other myoporum, so many of them can be used as ground covers and they do make very nice ground covers. It is gonna be a preferred plant for planting uh, along freeways or in areas where they want to cover a large area and they don't want to spend a lot of money, they can plant the myoporums and they love that heat uh, and or the dryness as well. So here's the purple leaf form and here's the green leaf. So there's two forms available. Uh, Nemesias are another annual color that is available here in Southern California in the early months of the year. So by December, January, you will see them. Uh, this one uh, may look like a shooting star. Uh, or Fingelium, which is uh, Cape Fuchsia, another shrub that merits a lot of attention, but it's often overlooked uh, because many people may not be familiar with it. So here's uh, the yellow form, and uh, there's the uh, bell-shaped flowers uh, that kind of or may resemble a Fuchsia, uh, and that's why the common name comes out from. Uh, and there's uh, four stamens and the stigma. And then uh, Scrofularia, which is uh, where the family gets its name. Uh, so here's that bee plant, Scrofularia californica, uh, native to California, coastal areas and or chaparrals. And then there's uh, Scrofularia nodosa. Uh, many of them do have some potential as far as medicine and many of them have been used as traditional uh, medicinal plants uh, for by people. Uh, and here's uh, Scrofularia micrantha, or the big flower individual, or probably one of the most, the biggest flower and the showiest uh, of them all uh, that you may find. Uh, and uh, a few other more unusual things. So we have uh, this individual here with kind of bluish flower on the left 
uh, you have the drawing of uh, uh, the flower and uh, you see a very nice cluster of flower. Or we have Sutera, which is commonly known as Bacopa here. And that has become, this one has become a very popular, either small ground cover or a cascading plant. And it's still a member of this family. And now we can see that the petals have elongated and just made a very simple tube uh, for by the plant. Uh, or Vervascum, um, common name is Mullen, which many of them uh, here uh, could become a problem or they can escape into our natural habitat. And so the images that you see here are from Griffith Park, where the plant is now naturalized. It comes up every year and uh, it's just now part of the other plants that go in that area. And so here is uh, the flowers for that plant. So it will come back from seed uh, without any problem and it will not require any supplemental water or anything else for us. And also a little bit more unusual is the genus Freilinia. And this is a larger shrub from Africa, South Africa. Uh, here it is uh, growing once again at South Fullerton Arboretum. And I have gotten many of this uh, from their sale. So they do have a uh, plant shop where some of the plants from the garden are propagated and offered to the public. Uh, so here's uh, the flowers, a lot more unusual to find uh, only from botanic gardens or areas where they may grow them. Uh, but it does call for more attention because it is a very nice shrub. Uh, or here's a different species uh, with the yellow flowers. And uh, in our area, hummingbirds will visit them. In Africa, it's going to be another bird uh, that will go after the pollen and nectar. And uh, they're bow bo trees, uh, what is known as the only epiphytic member of this family. So it's also from South Africa. And I guess in the wild, it grows on top of trees or it grows on top of other plants. Uh, and I've grown it and I have it, have had it for many years. So there's uh, the very nice flowers. It's also deciduous, meaning that it's gonna go dormant during our winter and wake up during the spring which is kind of unusual for the members as well. Uh, so there's a very large tubular flower following uh, the bird pollination syndrome. And there's the fruit uh, that can germinate very easily. And so we are able to propagate it without a problem. And to finalize, here's just uh, the different members all together, uh, just so that you can see that the flowers may look similar, but once you look at the stems, the leaves, and the rest of the flower com plant, plant components, you can see that it's going to be a very diverse plant family. So with that, have a great day.